Hi guys, and welcome to another game review by Thinker Themo. If you're new to our channel, um, I'm Amy. I'm all about mechanics, and this is my wonderful fiance Maggie, Hello. who is obsessed with story <laughs> and theme. And we really, truly have those two dichotomies in our lives. Yeah, <laughs> um, pretty much our relationship in yeah, life. Yeah, that's right. And that, and I guess that plays out when we look at board games. So mm. um, today we are very excited to be reviewing um, a, an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. Actually, it's not that old. Um, Agizia Shifting Sands. Now, Agizia Shifting Sands uh, was on Kickstarter. It is an updated version of a game called Agizia, mm. which was from 2009. This is the updated version from 2019. Mm -hmm. So it was released last year. It's a game that we, spoiler alert, we play a lot of this a game. A lot. A lot. <laughs> yes. And so like we're, you know, we've been reviewing a lot mm. of the hotness, a lot mm. of the games from Essen Spiel, and it's really nice to now, well, first of all, be back home because mm. if you've been following along, we got yes. a bit stuck in a different state Finally, in Australia with we're allowed um, across lockdowns. The yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're back home and we just felt a bit nostalgic, like doing some <laughs> of our favorite games um, instead of some of the uh, all the Boxing Day sale yeah. games that I've bought. Um, um, but anyway, so, so many games, so many games, it's overwhelming pile of games. That's a good thing. It's a it great a problem game. to have. Yeah. yeah. So today we are looking at Agizia. I should say it's by uh, the publisher is Stronghold Games. I've written down all the names of the publishers. It's a lot of people because involved. it's a, a lot but of it's designers. A, a lot of designers involved, yeah. but it's a group of Italian designers um, that come together in a number of different games. Um, but it's for for here we go. Flaminia <laughs> Brasini, Virginia Gigli. Those two in particular, of the four designers of this game, um, they designed Coimbra. And don't even get me started about Coimbra. Great game. Um, and they also worked on Lorenzo Il Magnifico, mm -hmm. another, another, another favourite of ours, game, yeah. which um, they did with Simon Luciani. Uh, most of you mm -hmm. will be familiar with um, his work. Um, and also in this game, Stefano Luperto and on Antonio Tinto. Okay, Italian is not... Apologies uh, to yeah, everybody. So many for, apologies. Yeah. Um, but it's a game Getting that plays up. two to four. Mm -hmm. And so Maggie hasn't been able to play this one solo. Uh, but we'll get straight into what this game is all about. Yeah. So in Agizia, we are in Egypt and we're trying to build these monuments like the obelisk and pyramids and statues. And so the way we're going to do that is we have a crew of people... Um, workers and a leader and we're going to be well we're actually going to be uh, sailing down the Nile um, I love the Nile <laughs> denial. <laughs> and, yeah, denial in general I'm in denial about a lot of things a lot of the time but this is a different kind of Nile um, so we're going did you to plan that joke? no <laughs> that is that is legit if you did we need to talk no, I did not plan okay, that. No, okay. um, it was a naturally, organically <laughs> bad joke. Okay, good. Um, but yeah, you're going to be making your way down the uh, river Nile, and you're going to be collecting resources. You're going to be uh, upskilling your crew, and yeah, um, building up the um, well, uh, helping your way to be able to make more stone and the stuff that we're going to eventually be using to um, yeah, build those monuments. And, and that's a, essentially it. Yeah. And in a way, you are. I guess it's a competitive game. It's a highly competitive game, um, but you are cooperating in a way because you're you're all contributing yeah, to you're these monuments. All together building the monuments. That's yeah, right. That's true. And but um, it's not a cooperative. But it's nowhere <laughs> near a cooperative yes. game. Um, if you know our channel and we're saying that we love it, you can probably guarantee that this is a tight competitive race. And mm. there are many reasons why I love this game. Similar reasons to why I love Coimbra. Um, the same, you know, some of the same designers. It, it feels like um, this is, I would say this is kind of a midway game. It's a game that I certainly use. I love to teach this game. Yeah. Um, I use it to try and push people it's a little bit. It's been a good bit, gateway, A actually. good gateway. Yeah. A gateway mm. into heavier games. Um, but in and of itself, I love to play this game. And let me tell you why. Mm. It has some similar properties to a rondelle game. I do love rondelles. Yeah. And because the way that it works is you have um, quite a large number of ships at your disposal that act as your workers in a kind of worker placement style game. But what's really interesting about it is this Nile that runs through the center of the board and it has stop off points where you can pick up action cards that give you immediate or permanent 
or um, some like tableau building abilities. Um, or you can stop off at these like uh, ports where you uh, dock one of your boats in here and you can help build the monuments, which is the main way of getting victory points in this game. But the trick to all this is you can only travel in one direction down the Nile. You start at the top and you can choose where you stop along the way, but you can never go backwards. I say never, but there is a, you know, there's some yeah. cards that allow you to break that yeah. ability. But um, the underlying premise is you can use as many of these boats as you like, but once you get to the end, that's it. So like a rondelle, it's forcing you to think about, do I jump ahead of everyone and pick up all of the best goodies yeah, along the, balance, the way? The tension that, of that balance. Oh, I love that tension so much. It's like my favorite thing yes. because you, you want to jump ahead and grab something, um, but then you're leaving behind lots of other things for other people to cherry pick and pick up. Yeah. Um, and also you're allowing them, you know, more opportunity to do more things overall. Whereas mm. you are going to, if you race ahead and say, I go there, 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 and there. Well, now I've only used four out of my eight little boats. And that's really putting me at a disadvantage because I'm doing fewer things overall. So I really, really love that mechanism in this mm. game. Now there's lots of other things going on, of course. Um, the main way that you're going to get things done and by get things done, you're going to be contributing contributing to this ob obelisk here, um, to the pillars. pillars. Think, yeah. Yep. And then to the pyramid here and some statues and they all give you victory points in different ways. Um, they're really, I'm showing you, I should say the board that we have set up at the moment here is for two players. We were, we were kind of halfway through a game, um, when we started filming, um, but underneath these these kind of two player versions, you can see that there's um, the way that it would look if there if it was a three or yeah, four player game. It's just more, and basically just it's longer. just opening up the board more. It's providing more spaces. Mm. Likewise, in a two player game, we've got some um, kind of workers blocking. that are blocking some certain spaces, mm. and there's some things turned over. Um, I would I would say that this is a game that we enjoy much more at three or four players. Definitely, yes. And at four players, that's where this game really sings. Um, it's it's hard to get four players to the table at the moment. Mm. We understand, but as gaming groups come back together, this is one that you could really easily learn at two players, yeah. and then you know drag your friends into it, yeah. <laughs> into it once you get your uh, gaming tables back together. Um, now, I want to talk about this kind of what you have going on in in your player set or your little tableau. The way that this game works is that you've got four sets of crews of different colors and the purple crew is more like the, the leader. It's got the leader. He doesn't really, he can't do anything by himself, he's but management. He can, he's management, <laughs> middle management. <laughs> yeah. um, he's the general manager. He's, he's just useless by, by him or things. herself or themselves, but uh, just generally if you pair them things. up with someone else, they can really yeah. shine. And so what you're doing is um, depending on the level, you're going to up um, kind of upskill these groups of workers um, or these crews and you can see the value that they have at the top of the board. Now that's going to, when you sum those together, that essentially gives you your spending power when you're going to be placing these bricks um, into different uh, components on the board. So whether that's the obelisk or as you can see Maggie and I are building across these pillars to try and race for um, victory points. If you mm -hmm. get to the end first, you get victory points, but these also unlock different special abilities that you can use ongoingly. Um, there's some end of game bonuses in the mm -hmm. statues. If you build here, you're placing, you're kind of um, making it known that this is going to be an objective that you're going mm -hmm. to be working towards for victory points at the end. And then you can see Maggie has started to contribute to the pyramid down the bottom uh, where you get a bonus if you've put the most um, bricks in the pyramid. Mm. Um, and so to do all that, you need your workers to have the right amount of power. You also need to have enough stone. Stone is the, the material that you use to get all this building done. And you get stone by collecting some cards that are um, down the right hand side of the Nile here. So as you can see, I've collected quite a lot of stone mm. cards. So every time there's a um, uh, mining phase in the game, I will be increasing my number of stone to then spend them to get some building done. And classic Euro, you've also <laughs> got to feed your workers. So there's a feeding phase and you also have to make sure that you've got enough um, grain to mm -hmm. feed all of the workers as you're upskilling them. They, you know, cost more. Yeah. 
Um, so as I mentioned, there's other action cards. So um, these cards get changed every round and you can see that they go from uh, you know, rounds one to five, that's showing you the kind of card progression. So the cards earlier in the game uh, will often give you these kind of tableau mm. building, engine building abilities. As it gets later, they're much more like rewards and ways to break the game. The final thing is that there are end game goals here in the Phoenix. Phoenix? Sphinx. Sphinx. Sphinx cards. I don't know why I just said Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix That's rises from Phoenix. the ashes. Very different thing. But yeah. it's got a Sphinx, Sphinx sound in it. Sorry. So I can Sphinx. see where the confusion would have come from. I don't know. <laughs> Theme. Um, <laughs> the Sphinx. Things. Yeah. Sorry. Sphinx the cards. Sphinx. The Sphinx give you um, end of game bonuses as well as VP if you're kind of looking at those cards and then destroying them, you get bonus VP. Anyway, I've gone into this in way too much detail <laughs> this time around, but I'm super, like, I love this game mm. so much. And um, I will talk about why I love it um, first, and then you can have a chat about how you feel about it. Okay. Um, but I, I really enjoy that it's just this confined game. Um, I was talking to Maggie about this, but what did do this and, and Coimbra, which is a completely different set of mechanics, have very in common. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it is a very, like, I like games that are very tight in terms of what you can get done, mm -hmm. but it allows you that flexibility to play within a very tight set of rules. It feels like a very confined space. It feels like the tension is constant at a four player game um, with that trade off of do I jump ahead and get the thing I really want? Are they even going to go for the thing that I want? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. At When it's only two players, you've only got one person to think about. And if they yeah. don't take your action, you're kind of their pressure's yeah. off. But when there's three other players, it's like sweating the whole time. Yeah. Like, I really need to do that. And the tension can, is real. The tension <laughs> is real. And um, we really love that about the game. Mm. Um, I will talk about as well, this is the Kickstarter edition. Um, on the reverse side of the board is the old game. So they made it with the Kickstarter edition that you could play the old game. Uh, we have never felt the need to go back and play the old mm. game. I know that people, even if they um, slightly prefer the older game, um, they've kind of transitioned to playing the new game, uh, which solves a few little issues, I think. Um, one other thing about this game is that there's this disc on the right-hand side, which you can kind of mess with other people's game mm. um, by changing uh, the cards that can be used to generate grain. So if someone's collecting red cards, if you move this um, disc away, they can no longer generate the grain like on this card here, yeah. for example. Now, my understanding is that was a lot more tense in the old version right. because there wasn't a lot of ways to move this disc. Um, but now it's it doesn't add too much tension no. to the game. It's something to keep your eye on, but it's, yeah. it's not that big a deal. Uh, there's a great catch-up mechanic as well. If you are last in victory points, you get to go first, and mm. going first means you often get the best benefit yeah. or the best cards. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about thematic integration. So it's uh, I feel like the best element of thematic integration is that going down the River Nile um, because yeah like you, you can only really go in one direction is very very difficult to like go against the tide again it can happen if you manage to get um, for example like that ability of like once per round you can take an action further up in the Nile it's mm -hmm. like oh crap I forgot this thing um, <laughs> and then you go back up aside from that yes you are building you know you are kind of collecting stone to an, an, an effort or strength of your of your workers to to build these monuments but I never really feel like yeah it's, it feels like I never feel like it's an immersive, like I'm in this world creating mm. these things. It sort of feels like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm building this little thing, I'm building that little thing over there. Um, it, yeah, so I would say it's it's a nice thematic integration, but it's not like an immersive, mm. kind of lose That's yourself in an Egyptian wonder. <laughs> like, it, no. The components are really nice. Um, the, the board itself, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell from, like I'll try and do some like, nice photos of it but it's got this beautiful like the actual river has this like shine mm. um to it the the meat the the wooden components are are fine the artwork is it's pretty engaging so it is a game that a lot of people don't like the art maybe. oh really i yeah. don't i don't mind it at all yeah because some and, people and I don't have not mind it i actually quite like it like it feels yeah yeah I don't so have some people have said that it's too bright like it's too contrasting oh yeah um but i i'm with you i complete i mean, I, I love it have you ever seen how i dress That's true. <laughs> it's like, maggie loves I color am very bright <laughs> and like love like loud colors so yeah that's probably not going to be a problem for me. No, I, I enjoy fair, it too. But yeah. I can see where yeah. people are going. I, I think it's because they think that 
um, you know, Egyptian theme should be a bit more muted. Um, yeah, but, the... but I really like anything that's going to catch the eyes of mm. our non-gaming friends because yeah. when you've got it on the table and it looks like bright and beautiful, it's way more engaging, I think. I, I agree, mm. completely agree. So I don't mind that, yeah, but you... Yeah, because you do tend to associate Egyptians with uh, sand, yeah. uh, gold, and black. Yes. And maybe a bit of teal. Like mm. you often sometimes see a bit of teal, but there's a lot of other colors. I don't mind it myself. I quite enjoy it. Um, yeah, so in terms of um, other things that I like, so the, like theme aside, other things that I enjoy about this game, as we've said before, that tension of like, you know, and it is much better a three to four player mm, game. Better, yeah. um, I love, this is a rondelle that I actually can win sometimes. Like whenever there's a rondelle in a game, I usually don't win. Like Amy sort of has figured it out. I think for me, I do love that, you know, if she rushes ahead um, or the whole two, whoever we're playing with rush ahead, I can kind of take my time and pick up all the bits that were left behind and sort of go at my own pace, which is really good. Unlike, uh, you know, good old Mark Ibo where everybody resets as soon as mm. someone reaches the, the end point. Um, I think the reason why I can win with this is because they have the Sphinx cards. It's like these little sort of surprise, secret surprise, because you don't know what Sphinx cards people are, are collecting, mm. of endgame conditions that for me help me uh, give focus to my game. Mm. So as I'm going through it and I'm and every time, like if there's any card that allows you to get extra Sphinx cards or or uh, get some for free or get to keep more, or whatever, and I will always collect them. With yeah, Sphinx cards. Yeah. So I don't know if it means that 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 is um, overpowered. Uh, overpowered mm. I don't feel like it is. Um, but it's hard to win without some of them because yeah. they offer big rewards if you yeah, can get yeah. that done. What I yeah. do love about it is, yeah, it's giving me that sense of purpose and focus mm. along the way because then it's like, yeah, great. Like I've got now a couple of things that are um, that mean that I'm going to focus over there and like I've, I've got some synergies mm. that are going to give me some secret points at the end. Yeah, yeah. and it is, it's kind of fun at the end because uh, you are scoring points along the way as you're building things, but when everyone reveals like the five cards that they have that give them 50 points, yeah, you're like, it's like, oh, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> Which some people may not enjoy yeah. that. Like some people may feel like, well, you know, it's it's that incomplete or yeah, incomplete yeah. information. Yeah, you that... can't tell who's winning until the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I actually really, really enjoy that. I do too. Because one of the things that I hate in gaming, um, I can be a very sore loser, usually when I can see that I'm like right now, um, in this game, I'm quite far behind. So games where you can tell along the way that there's no way you're catching up, mm. I absolutely hate that. And I get so, like, I get angry and bratty and depressed and like I go through like the whole like which, cycle of grief yeah, which is strange stages because of grief people perceive me to be really competitive because I am and I do like to try to win when I play mm. a game and I enjoy winning I'm not a I, but I don't think I'm a like I don't gloat when I win no. yeah, but I yeah. also I'm not a bad loser either when no. someone beats me I'm like fair enough yeah. whereas Maggie doesn't care about winning but yeah. cares deeply about <laughs> losing um, yeah. <laughs> not losing about losing badly yeah. it's like yeah. and that comes down to like that's just like ego pride of like I just don't want I don't, like issues with feeling like I don't want to look like an idiot or like which I've had to do a lot of work on and uh, bo like board gaming actually gives me a lot of uh, yeah ground to work on or opportunities to work on that but what i was going to say about that is even in this game where it looks like i'm quite far behind because you have these these um sphinx cards that are in game condition i feel like i've got some i've got a lot of secret mm. points so at the moment i look like i'm far far behind but like one of my cards is for every purple card that i have i'm gonna get two victory what? points uh, yeah. also are we not finishing this game <laughs> Oh, I thought we were... <laughs> That's right. Anyways, but now yeah, so, I know. so or, or, or things that, for example, you know, I'm going to get points for being at the top of these markers. So those are things that along the way of the game, you you know, your, your opponents may not be paying that much attention to. Mm -hmm. There are some, there's also some cards where you get points if other people reach Do the things. top of those markers. Yeah, those ones are fun. And that's really fun because you're like, you know, when people are like, oh, should I, shouldn't I? You've got a bit of a secret agenda. You're like, yeah, you totally should. <laughs> you're going to get a discount not knowing... <laughs> them not knowing that you actually will get additional bonuses for them reaching that. Yeah. So like, I love all those components. And as you said, it feels really 
uh, you're guided because you you know you can only kind of go down one way as yeah. soon as you pick a position you you've essentially like all those other tiles have been left behind they're out of the the pool of choices to make so you can kind of relax and go well i've made my bed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now i have to make the best with with yeah. what i've got and there's only um five rounds so it's mm. it's quite a snappy game um it, it never feels like it overstays its welcome yeah. um and I think the iconography is brilliant yes, in this very game. Easy like once, to follow. yeah, and that's why I love to teach this game mm. because once people know what the icons mean, you can kind of step through them and then yeah. you can straight away get into playing. Yeah, um, and everyone we've introduced it to has really enjoyed it. There's been a couple of confusing elements with the points, like there's the whole thing oh, of like scoring? you get a lot of yeah. points along the way as you're building for the stone that you spend, and and sometimes that's hard to keep track of. Mm -hmm. We have gotten confused a couple of times, and I feel like, I don't know if maybe that's something that could have been better explained in the rules yep. or made a bit more yeah, I, obvious. That's right. When I yeah. have referred to the rule book, it's quite hard to find what I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. 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 But um, otherwise, I mean, this design, I think we'll just keep on playing this, yeah. keep on bringing it out. It's um, quick to set up. It's quick to play. Well, yeah. it's relatively quick to play in the scheme of all of our big box euros. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I feel like it's it's thinky. It's uh, it's got a bit of you know meat to sink your teeth into, um, but it's not like it's not the most overwhelming of games, which makes it a really good intro and yeah. gateway for exactly yeah. 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 And it's it's because you're only doing a few things each turn. It's yeah. just got it's got a good flow to it. Yes, it does because huh, it's, ah, it's the <laughs> Um Anyway, <laughs> if you can't, because I'm not the only one with the bad uh, <laughs> Nile jokes. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> if you love. Um, games that are nice and tight and, and you play with three or four players, then this is a great mm. game to add to your collection. Highly recommend um, this game and these designers. Yeah. So um, It'll yeah. forever be part of our collection. I can't see this um, moving on anytime soon because we genuinely love it. Yeah, yeah love definitely. Playing it. Yeah. Um, if you like this review, please hit like hit subscribe, tell us if you've played this game or what you thought um, of this video. Um, please hit the notification bell as well because we've got lots more videos coming up this year and that way you'll know exactly when we launch them. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, that's all for Agizia Shifting Sands. Um, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.